to one wife called Njemima Mumbua Mudama. Uh, I have three children with her, two sons and one daughter. And then I have uh, five daughters uh, from a marriage that did not succeed. And then I have three um, more children, two girls and one boy also from a broken marriage which did not uh, succeed. I'm a businessman and a self-made businessman. I'm in the mining industry uh, where I mine gemstones. And uh, I'm also in the real estate business. And uh, uh, that's my source of income. And that is what I have been doing in all my life. And uh, I'm a, um, a serious self-made politician um, who stood on the elections, which I was elected. I never lost one. I'm the first uh, member of parliament in Kenya to pay uh, taxes as a legislator. And uh, I'm also um, the first person in Kenya to opt not to stand in an election because of uh, a lack of democracy and fairness, transparency. And uh, for me to stand by those who have been messed up and mistreated, um, I hoped it not to, not to stand. I'm a trained gemstone cutter. Gemstone? Cutter. One who knows how to cut gemstones. But, um, still, I retain the same certificate of Kanu and witness life member of Kanu. I was the first chairman of Kanu in Machako's branch, deputizing Mulu Mutisia. Being a young man, deputizing a powerful politician <laughs> uh, like Mulu Mutisia. I that has never come out I didn't even know about Yes, I came out from Wiper, I went to LDP uh, where I played a role. And I went to DP where I supported Mike Kibaki. I was with the SDP of Charlie Tingilu, being the patron mm -hmm. of SDP. And then uh, I was a member and found member, found a member of uh, Rainbow Coalition. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I was in the politics of uh, Orange and banana, standing with the uh, Raila, Kalonzo in the orange. Then I became and the member of ODM Kenya. From ODM Kenya, I went to Wiper. We changed the name now. So, I managed that one. 2017 was even tougher than 2013. But I managed to get him, auction team to be number two. Mm. Now, here is 2022. 
Because Mudama is not there. Where is he now? Uh -huh. I told you I'm not going to answer you, but I, <laughs> I will take you through and ask you a question. Mm. Where is he now? Mm. And where is the guarantee that he will be Raila's running mate? When he was with me, he did not walk to Raila mm. like he is being fished out. But he looked to Raila, like a recognizable politician who commands respect. Apa, he moved without any guarantee of what he will be. And I'm sure, I can tell you for take today, he cannot be number two. No. <laughs> the hope is the BBI will go through. But even if it goes through, he won't be the Prime Minister. He'll be the uh, number two uh, Deputy Prime Minister, something like that. Where was the support to come from? Even the Kikuyus who worked very closely with the Kibaki in the government, they never bought that idea. Yeah. They did not buy it. So now how can you go beyond that? Which Kikuyus are you going to find now to stop them from standing a presidential candidate? Now, I don't even need to answer you, but I just need to explain to you. When he was with me, listen to me, he became Kibaki's vice president. If I was auctioning him, then that, that was a very good auction. He should accept it and say, I want Mudama to keep on auctioning me. Okay? Number two. The ever highly competitive position of a running mate I have ever come across was to shelve others around the Raila and get Kalonzo there. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, Menya, I've seen challenges. That one on deputizing Raila. I think it costed me uh, part of my days of my life putting together. The, the 2017 or the 2013? 2013. Mm. 2013. 2013. Mm. Because who, those who are around the Raila, they wanted Kalonzo to walk in as Kalonzo because he had nothing behind him. Uh, the 800 votes, he got 800,000 votes he got in 2007. Where was the guarantee you get the same? Mm. And now uh, people have changed the uh, pattern of voting and they are not convincingly looking at the communities. Mm. Because if that was to happen, then you would not find Kambas, Merus, and uh, Coast, and uh, many people behind the Raila. Giants in this country. Mm. There was Raila that side, and there was Kibaki this side. Uh, Kibaki was leading the government and Raila had just left the government. Are we together? And the way Kenyans they were looking at Kibaki one side and Raila at one side, they, 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 they took them with the, same, with the same level measure, believing that the two are made of uh, articulating and representing people's interest. So uh, they looked at uh, Kibaki and uh, Raila and the conclusion that they made was, wait a minute, uh, Kibaki is surrounded by certain group of people who are against the liberation of this country, all through. But when you look at uh, Raila's side, except a few individuals, one or two, 98% of those who are surrounding Raila are people who have been uh, articulating uh, the liberation and, uh, and democracy uh, in this country. So Kenyans are sharp 
many people may not get to know this, but they are sharp. So they compared the two. And they said, despite the fact that Kibaki was there, but now he has been swallowed <laughs> by uh, certain characters who are not faithful with what they are saying. So Kenyans fought it with Raila. And uh, the amendment was lost. Then came now 2010. 2010. Imagine now the same situation he found the two together. <laughs> 207, uh, you know, it's important to understand the history of this country. Many people may not, may not even get to understand why some things happen. Mm. So 2010 found them together. together. Mm. So the only person who tried to oppose uh, in the initial stages, Kalonzo was being convinced, hey, the judge does not support this amendment. So if you side with the church, yes, you, 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 for, you have to forego your interest of becoming the president of this country. Mm -hmm. So the best thing is you support. And as usual, you, you jumped from that corner to that corner, that corner to that corner. So from there, uh, I went into a coalition, known as PNU, coalition, with WIPA, where he negotiated for Kalonzo to be the vice president. And then uh, thereafter, at last, I became a member of uh, UDA, where I am the current chairman of UDA. And uh, I'm campaigning now to make sure that we win the elections to form the next government. I'm standing uh, as a governor for Machakos, and I'm convinced and I have no doubts that uh, I will win. And if I don't win, then I will win. <laughs> so there's only one option. It's only one option. <laughs> so that's where we are. And uh, I'm working around the clock now to unite Kenyans. I feel uh, distracted and box to the corner when I see the communities by organization where people are talking about this region coming here, this community coming here, this kingpin coming here, uh, to sit down and uh, start sharing um, and distributing among us themselves the, the government that will be elected to put in place by Kenyans put it by Kibaki and there will be no presidential candidate from Kikuyu land. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very stupid thing. So, so it it's just like Raila and the and the Uru. Mm. When Akunyo Chei will and the Uru comes out to tell him I'll deliver Kikuyu for to you. My goodness. <laughs> so, so we will never wake up. We will never get to grow to see things and realize our mistakes. I, I, I said it. I said, Raila, you are making a very big mistake. In fact, what we always wanted to see is to smile and and Guyangu Raila, you know, I've tried. I'll give you my fault. Like in Yahawa, that is what Kenyans can expect and mark my words today. Can you imagine us pretending to be. <laughs> I, sometimes I tell you. Can you imagine people actually sitting down and believing that there will be another Kikuyu presidential candidate? If we signed that agreement to say Kibaki will not stand again, then it carried weight. But how could we have now made that decision on behalf of Kikuyu community? At that time, they had people who were finishing university, were getting a form four, were getting doing <laughs> masters. With their own interests on in how they want their future to be. At it went in a kikaratasi to Simame Central to say, Can you read this? <laughs> Look! <laughs> uh, was we support Kibaki by adding numbers mm -hmm. to him? Mm -hmm. How was that deal struck? Uh, to make sure that uh, Raylan does not stand to 
I have more members of parliament that uh, number of votes cast it. So uh, we agreed that there will be a certain percentage of the government and we agreed that uh, 2012, because the election just was to be held in 2012, but we moved it to 2013, uh, because of the six months between uh, December and uh, uh, between August and uh, and I think February or something, uh, we agreed that 2013 general elections. Nobody. Imagine what a stupid way of reaching an agreement. Imagine <laughs> Musila, myself, Kimunya, John Meshuki sitting right. together in uh, John Meshuki's office and agreeing that there will be no Kikuyu <laughs> in 2013 who will stand as a presidential candidate. What one copy? <laughs> Four people. So you, you are the team that, team that was negotiating that day? Yes. Uh. But now we end us into an agreement of four people forgetting that Kikuyu's the, the decision cannot be made by two people, Kimunya and Kimishuki. And for that matter, in addition to Kibaki himself. So we ended in a very stupid agreement. And, uh, and we took it. And the chief whip. Oh, yes. I was supporting entirely yes, this <laughs> Katiba of 2010. Hey, <laughs> huh? could you not stand in front of me rejecting it? And now we had put a ribbon stretch for Ayla <laughs> on top of his mm -hmm. uh, on top of his suit mm -hmm. to appear truly to be the captain. <laughs> <laughs> so it was so interesting and so impressive and massive mm -hmm. that uh, we managed now to campaign with the two strong candidates together, Raila and the Kibaki. There was no stopping them. So we managed now to get the amendment of the constitution. There is no time that my license was withdrawn. No. But what happened is the Minister of Mining, Petroleum and Mining at that time, issued a roadside instructions through a memo giving instructions on how uh, the exports should be conducted. And I thought that was being aimed at me because we are, we are, we are the biggest exporters in this country in terms of gemstones. And uh, the, the, the rules that the regulation that was being introduced without following the right channel, they were to slow down and apply speed governor on my business. Because the uh, orders and the instructions were, when you are applying for export permit, you have to apply to the direct of mines. Then direct of mines takes the application to office of the president, uh, of the minister, and the CS now, wherever he is, if he's tra traveling in America and is there for two months, you will only have to do your business for two months. Mm. So we went to court, we challenged the orders, we got the court orders, and uh, the matter is still going ongoing in court, and we are back to business. If Kenyatta was jailed by the colonialists, with his colleagues and were taken out and away from their families. And the only consolation Mzee could tell Kenyans is <laughs> let's forgive them. <laughs> huh? Let's forgive them. Even himself he did not see the time that he was locked in. He comes and says, let us forgive them. Nelson Mandela was jailed for 30 years. That good years. When he came out, what did he say? Let's forget about them. Let's forgive them. Let's not 
have grudges about and against them. So that is life. And if we take it in that way, I'm telling you, there will be not what is happening between Russia and Ukraine. Yes. You know children, they follow their uh, father's and parents' footsteps. Yes. <laughs> I was critical to Wur and the Ruto because my leader, Raila Molodinga, was critical to them. So I was following the footsteps of my leader. When they shook hands mm -hmm. and one sto stopped calling the other one a man man <laughs> and the other one a drunkard and bank smoke and so on, <laughs> then who am I now <laughs> to sit and keep on you know, maintaining that grunge that was there? Mm -hmm. If my leader has gone and uh, shook hands with hands with the uh, with the, his opponent. Who am I not to do the same? That is what brought us together. Mm -hmm. And we said if these two can forgive one another, mm -hmm. us, we can give, forgive one another a million times. I'm, I'm imagining that conversation. Seventeenth election. It was not me who was being arrested, it was Raila who was being arrested. So to reach to Raila, you went to get to Mudama so that Raila can react now in a way of uh, creating uh, restless and, uh, you know, cause chaos in the country. And uh, uh, then they could reach him. But I told him to listen to him. To listen to him. Don't even ask why. Leave it with me. So, you'll be arrested. But because you have been speaking the truth, the, 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 the prosecution will not go far with those fabricated and flame charges. So uh, that is what makes me speak with courage. Let me, you know, courage starts by, by one, believing with what you are saying. To believe what you are saying, it is created by uh, being truthful. You don't have being charged, being uh, Once you are truthful, mm -hmm. then you want to say what you believe in. Mm -hmm. And uh, by doing that, you are going by the saying, speak the truth and truth will set you free. Why am I saying that? With that supplementary question you have asked me now, it is true. I was arrested seven times. I was arrested seven times and charged with eight speech. But those cases could not go far. That was uh, before the 2017 election. Pain when I know, instead of moving to the business of the day, of uh, changing the leadership of this country and giving Kenyans what they are expecting, we will start spending time now negotiating on what um, Mupokomo gets, what Akikuyu gets, what Akamba gets, what is for the Luos, what is for the Kambas. And then we circle that into a situation where the questions of uh, where you come from now will be raised and you'll be asked what numbers are you bringing here on this table. And because you are a Lendile, uh, you feel discriminated, you feel mocked. Because people are asking you, why are you not uh, one of the big five communities in this country? So that message, it's so painful. Because it's like uh, people saying, uh, because you do, you're not wearing shoes, you're not going to be served with food. <laughs> so I hate that 
and uh, it pains me. And my prayer is one day we will wake up like Tanzanians. While we are dealing with only 145, uh, I mean one year 45 communities or tribes, in Tanzania there are over 145. But you cannot hear about who are the Wachakas, who are the Maasais, who are the Wamerus and uh, Butiamas and what not, Kabira and Yerele Julikani. And uh, that's my...